We're going to talk about equipment, personnel, and protocols. Okay. So, let's look at the table. There are two basic types of tables. Make sure I got one screen here. There are two types of tables. One is called the regular Krabs table, and one is the Krabs, as I told you before. They are not the same, and we're going to see the difference. One of the most important things for you to remember is that the table layout is symmetric relative to the center section. What's on the left is exactly the same as what's on the right. So when you look at this, when you look at this table layout, which we'll see something there in a moment, when you look at this table layout, everything <coughs> on one side is the same as the other. So if you're standing on the left side of the table, don't worry about what's going on down at the right side of the table. It doesn't concern you, it doesn't affect you, it has nothing to do with you. Just worry about what's in front of you. And if you do that, you will simplify your life tremendously. So just worry about where you are standing and what's going to happen in front of you, not what's going on. You're going to hear these people throwing all these terms out there, words that you don't know what half the words mean. I don't know what half the words mean. They do it to try to impress people. It doesn't help their game. It isn't going to help them win or do anything else. It's just gibberish. And that's, so just ignore it. Okay, here's a regular crash table. This was obviously taken at one of the casinos. <coughs> this was actually taken at Greektown. Uh, so let's see, what do we see here? Well, let's look at some of the features of this regular crash table. First of all, you will see that there is a railing that goes around the outer edge. And there are little slots in that railing. Well, you know what those are for. Those are for your chips, okay? Uh, there is a leather piece that extends out. You can lean against that. Uh, however, you don't put, we'll see when we get to the protocols, you don't put stuff on there. If you want, sometimes if you need an ashtray and things, you can put it down on the shelf that's down below. And, uh, and typically, you keep your hands inside the perimeter of the table. Perimeter of the table. The center section here is where the, we'll see a person called the box man sits. And this is all the money that they house has. This is all their money. Uh, we'll talk more about some of the component pieces. One of the important things to look at when you walk in is this little little sign that's right over here on the side, that blue sign, there's nothing on it now. It tells you the minimum bet for that table. And what you should try to do is stay away from large minimum tables. They're gonna eat you alive. The money goes too fast. So you try to find a $5 table rather than a $10 table. And if you can find cheaper, play it cheaper. Uh, that will tell you what it is. It will say $5 minimum. $2 minimum, whatever it is, something, not $2 in this town. <laughs> in Las Vegas, it can be $2. This is a slot where they put all your money. They get your money. In other words, there's no cash literally on the table. You exchange your cash for chips. And we'll talk about that too in just a moment. Uh, some casinos have some peculiarities about the table layout. For example, at Greektown, they have these little things that look like they've got little fire around them. They call them fire pads. That's what they're called. Uh, and, uh, and that's unique to them. That isn't necessarily going to be the case in one of the other casinos. But the layout is basically the same. Okay, so here's another view from the end, looking down the table. It is long, it's about 12 feet long. And so remember, you're either going to be standing around here, or you're going to be standing around this end. If you're standing down here, you have to, if you throw the dice, you have to throw it all the way down to the other end. So if you're down here, this is the view you have to try to throw the dice back that way. You must hit this back wall that's here. And that back wall is not smooth. It's made up by little cones, little pyramids. And they want you to hit it because in craps, the more random they can get the dice to roll, the more you're going to lose. So what do people try to do? They try to throw the dice, not random, which we'll talk about. But anyway, they want you to do that. Okay? And uh, these two slots that are here, this one and that one, is where they put the dealers. We'll talk about them in a moment. There are two dealers, and they will be controlling the game. Okay, now here's one side of the layout. As I said, let's suppose you're standing on the right-hand side. This is what you see, and this is all you have to be concerned with. Don't worry about what's down on the left-hand side. Just worry about this. The important bets, which we'll come back to, are pass line, don't pass, appeal, come, and these magic numbers that are here, which we'll explain what those are for. And uh, these little fire bets, you'll notice here, 
that the numbers go one, two, three, all the way up to seven. An interesting little thing that you might want to make note of is look at the little hash marks that are on one of these boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What that represents is the position of the people around the end of the table where they're standing. That's how they keep track of your money. They know exactly when you put your bet out there, they move it to one of these spots based on where you're standing around the edge of the table. They know exactly where it is. Anyway, there are seven spots, there are seven numbers here. And over here, there are seven numbers on this half of the table. Okay. Again, this is the right-hand side. The left-hand side looks exactly the same. One other note here is just to, you see it says here, don't call bets and don't call bets. Uh, that's something that they put in so that people don't cheat them. Because what they do is, if you walk up to the table and you say, the guy's about ready to throw the dice, and you say, I want to bet on the six, and you don't throw any money out there, they're not going to accept it as a bet. A call bet means you must put money on the table for the bet to be live. And they put that, that's their legal protection. They say, you didn't tell me that I had to do that. Oh, yes, they did. It's written right there on the table. You don't shout out a bet without putting physically money on the table. And so they don't get caught by somebody saying, oh, yes, I did. I, I said that number. Yeah, you did, but you didn't put any money. OK. And now, crapless craps. Well, it looks almost the same. Anybody notice, notice the, the fundamental difference between, between Regular craps and, and, and crapless craps. Well, on regular craps, you see these numbers that are up here. You've got numbers 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10. If you go to crapless craps, the numbers go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are more numbers. But everything else is the same. <coughs> everything else is the same. It's just that you've got more numbers. And we're going to talk about that. But again, as I said, I love this game. You see these little, you can see these little better now, these little uh, pyramids that are here. You can see them a little better now. You can feel them if you're standing at the table. You'll feel them there. Uh, they do want you to hit those so that uh, you get a, a random roll. OK. Seems like a silly question to raise. Where do you stand at the table? Is it like you're standing anywhere? Yeah, that's true. You could stand anywhere. However, there are circumstances where standing anywhere is impossible. If the table is empty, obviously stand anywhere as you want. Okay. If it's a busy table, you may not have a choice. There may be one spot open. That's the only one you get. So be it. However, this is the most important observation you can make. If you stand near the center of the table, guess what? What is the shortest distance to throw to the other end of the table? From the way at the other end, or right next to the stick person who's standing there, in the center. <laughs> so if you're interested in throwing the dice and having it be the shortest distance, that's where you want to stand. Now, does it make a difference where near the center? Oh, yes. If I'm right-handed, do I want to stand to the left of the, of the center person or to the right of the center person? to the right, because I throw right-handed, I would throw across my body to the other wall. If I were left-handed, I would stand to the left and throw the other way. And so standing there makes a difference for your being right-handed or left-handed. Now, some people don't care. They just throw the dice anywhere. But if you're really worried about throwing them in some controlled fashion, near the center is probably a good idea. Again, what's another reason for standing near the center? The people there are helpful. Don't be afraid to ask them questions. They will answer your questions. They love to answer your questions. Ask them questions. But if it's a real noisy time, and you've got people who are making lots of noise, and you're way down at the other end of the table, they're not going to hear you ask your question. If you're standing right next to them, they hear you. And that's always an advantageous situation. 